What is up YouTube, it is Mike once again with Grinding Gears Garage. Today we're going to be working on an LT250R cylinder. We are actually going to be doing a head stud repair. So both of these cylinders, uh, that one, this one has one, this has four head studs that are stripped out. Uh, we're only going to be repairing, uh, repairing one in here. We're going to be using what's called a time cert. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people that are watching that are in the automotive industry have heard of this before. Uh, a lot of people use what's called a helicoil, which is a, uh, it's almost like a spring, it's threaded. That's what this one had originally, and when I removed, there was actually a bolt instead of a stud. When I removed the bolt, it pulled the whole helicoil out. Nothing really seems to keep a helicoil in place. It doesn't really bite in very well. Now with the time cert, the way these work is they use what's a, it's a threaded insert. So it threads into your material and locks in with the, there's actually a slight taper. Uh, there's like a little flange on the top. I'll show a close up of it. That, uh, that helps lock it into place. I did this style repair on a cylinder head on an RV25 that I had built for a uh, 240SX. Uh, I never ran the motor, but I had the, the exhaust manifold on and off multiple times, torqued it multiple times. Uh, it's in a car right now that in Florida that runs and drives. He's, it's a drift car. He's rebuilt the engine a couple times, so he's had zero problems with that stud since I did a time cert on it. So I'm gonna do that on these two cylinder heads for you guys. Uh, if you do a lot of rebuilds and you constantly have bikes coming in and out, uh, time cert's not a bad investment. For someone that has one four-wheeler and they just stripped a stud out, it's probably not. It's about $80 to purchase one of these kits. It comes with five inserts uh, to begin with, and then you have to purchase more. Uh, about, they're about a dollar a piece after that. So I have the kits already from working on things throughout the year, so it's not too much of a, a cost to me to repair these. Uh, I will offer the services to anyone that wants to send me their cylinder. I'll easily repair it and send it back to you. That's no problem. Uh, it does get pricey if you're just going to do one yourself. It's about 80 bucks, and uh, it's kind of expensive. The helical kit's way cheaper, but I don't think they last, and I'm, I absolutely despise them. So we're going to, I'll show you a close-up of the kit, what, kit, what it consists of, and how we're going to uh, repair these cylinder heads. So we have both cylinder heads here. You can see they're both 5-bolt uh, reed cages, which is a larger reed cage. These only came on 87s. It's part of the pr reason I want to repair these so bad. They're highly desirable and they, they make a, a little bit more power than uh, a 90 or 88 to 92 because of the larger reed, reed cage. Uh, it's the same size reed cage as a uh, quadzilla. So I'm going to open up one of these kits for you guys. This one I used already to repair the cylinder head on that uh, RB25. So the kit consists of four bits. So you have a drill bit, which you're going to use to drill out all the holes in everything. Then it comes with a counter bore, which you then use to put a, uh, like a taper, or a counter bore as they call it, if this would focus. There we go. So the steps go drill bit, and you're going to taper the hole. Then you're going to tap the hole for the insert, which is, matches the outside of the insert. There we go, and then you can see the inside's threaded as well. Then you have, uh, it's an insert tool, which we'll go over then as well for the, the order of installing everything. So I have two kits here. This is a, an M10, and this is an M8. So this cylinder head was repaired once or twice already. These cylinder, or these studs here, I do not like. They are actually M10 by 1.0, which is... Uh, or is it 1.0 or 1.5? I don't remember, but they are a coarser thread than I would like to have on head studs. Come on, Fio Gish. There we go. You can see they're pretty coarse. So we're actually going to be pulling these studs out as well and fixing them to the correct uh, fine pitch thread, which is 125. So we're going to pull these out, repair all of them. I don't have enough inserts currently to fix all of them, but we're just going to do it for the video. I only have four which fix the, the stripped out holes, which you can see here. Kind of. The holes are pretty blown out. Uh, I'm not sure if they didn't drill it to the right size when they tapped it or what, but they're pretty torn up. So we're going to move over to the drill press. We're going to go ahead and do the one 
stud on this one. It's straightforward for both of them. We'll just show the process. It's pretty simple. So we're gonna move over to the drill press. We'll go ahead and drill this out and do all the boring and tapping and everything. Then we can install a new stud in it. So we have our cylinder here in our bench vise or uh, our drill press vise. I have I checked everything with a level, make sure the cylinder is level to the table to make sure we're not drilling on a taper. So we're just gonna go ahead and fire up our drill very slowly just check depth make sure we're not drilling out any deeper than we need to be deep enough we went as far as the stock stud was so then we're gonna go ahead and put this counter boring bit in swap out our drill bit and then just drill our bore counter bore slightly we don't want to go too crazy doesn't need to be super uh, there we go pop this bad boy in so the way that this works too, before I fire this up, I'll show you. It's got an aligning pin in the top, in the center of the bit, so you can't go, uh, so you can't be out of a alignment. So we're going to fire this on. So there we drilled in the taper. So we're going to go ahead over to the bench tap this hole and then we can install our threaded insert and our new uh, cylinder stud. So we have our cylinder set up here in the vise. We have our tap and our tap handle. Now there is two what look like taps in here but one is a, it says insert driver on it so we don't want to use that. That's for inserting the, uh, the insert obviously into your hole. So that's going to be used later. So we're going to go ahead and tap this hole now and make sure your tap is nice and straight. You know, this tap handle looks a little ridiculous because it's so long, but it's nice using one of these because you can actually tell if you're crooked or not because it's so long. So we're just going to go ahead and tap this, and then we're ready to throw in our insert. Hole tapped, we have our insert driver here. Uh, we're gonna put some oil on it. I just have some AeroCroil. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Then we're also gonna check how deep our hole is. The main, if this is, since this is a blind hole, you don't want to drive everything too far in. So we're gonna grab some electrical tape. And we are going to put it on the driver, and it's at the bottom of the hole, so we're not bottoming everything out. I got that. We have our new insert, which threads onto here nicely. Now the way that this works is this is, has a taper to it, so as you drive it in, it, it locks it into place. So we're going to start running this in, swap Oops. We're going to swap out taps, kind of a tap handle. Put this bad boy, oops. Start threading this in.
So as we go in, it's going to get a little bit tougher because the insert tool is driving the insert into the wall. Just going to back this out now. We're ready to stick a new stud in. And then we can uh, put the head back on and torque everything down to verify that it's all, uh, it's all good to go. So we have our new stud installed. I don't know if you, anyone knows this, but uh, our local Ace Hardware actually had the, the correct stud that we needed. So we're going to go ahead and just double nut this real quick just to make sure we have it in there nice and tight it's a good way to remove studs as well so we're just going to lock her in there here is my other 12 millimeter for now I'll just do this So they're nice and tight. We're going to put the head back on and torque it down and uh, we'll see how she holds up. We'll probably torque it a couple times just to, just to verify everything's nice and, nice and tight. So we have our torque wrench here set to 20 foot pounds. It's roughly what's in the climber ma manual. It says 19 to 22 so we just went with 20. This is the one that we repaired over here. We're just going to go ahead and torque it down. That one's torqued. Sweet. So we fixed one and then fucked another one up. Wonderful. So we're just going to go ahead and break these loose now. I wanted to make sure it would hold, but. So we got the head off here, and it looks like we don't have any problems. We may still have to fix this one, I gotta investigate that a little further. But here, we'll pull this out of the vise. This is the one we repaired right here. If it would focus. There we go. Doesn't look like there's any problems with it. It looks good, hasn't moved. Can't back it out, so I'm happy with it. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing to our other one, uh, I'm not going to film it because the process is pretty much the same, but it looks good. I'm very happy with it. It didn't rise at all. It's still recessed in the top of the cylinder head nicely. So uh, I'm def I might have to do it to this other stuff, which is kind of a bummer. Well, thanks for watching, guys. We we're very excited that this worked. Uh, I had a very good feeling it would work, but glad that it worked. I have another five bolt jug back in the rotation. Uh, it's going to go on uh, the engine. Actually, we pulled out of the restoration uh, LT 250R. We're going to bore it. It could use a uh, rebuild. The piston's got some pretty nasty scoring marks on it. The cylinder seems to be okay. So we're going to pour and polish this, rebuild that engine, and slap it in one of the other four wheelers uh, to put up for sale. So I'm glad this one's fixed. So we could definitely put this back in the rotation, and it's definitely a good. Uh, Good candidate for a port and polish. There's no work done to it. It looks really, really nice. So thanks for watching, guys. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing to our other LT jug we have sitting here that's kind of destroyed. We're not going to film it, obviously. Same process, uh, just obviously with bigger studs. They do sell taper studs that have a, uh, it's a 10 millimeter thread on the bottom with an 8, so you don't have to drill the holes in your head larger because obviously... It doesn't fit. This one was modified. So we're going to run those uh, tapered studs on that one so we don't have to draw out the head. So thanks for watching, guys. As always, please subscribe. Hit us up on Facebook if you have any questions. Uh, definitely hit us up if you want uh, us to fix your, your cylinder head. It's super easy for us to do. Just pay for shipping. And uh, however many studs, we'll come up with a price. Not 100% sure yet on repairing. But uh, just send us a message on Facebook. Just pretty much cover shipping to and from and a flat fee per stud. And uh, we'll get it back to you, no problem. Fairly easy process. So thanks for watching, guys. As always, hit us. Uh, stay tuned for next Friday. We'll have another video for you guys. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.